The evolution of sketch comedy in children's entertainment is quite interesting. In the beginning, kids had shows like The Electric Company, a TV series that was in fact meant for children, but heavily featured an adult cast. It also focused a lot on educating, meaning it was for a slightly younger audience than most kids' sketch comedy shows. We then, of course, had the iconic Nickelodeon series All That, which changed the children's sketch comedy game forever. With the cast featuring mostly tweens and teenagers, all that focused a lot more on being the children equivalent to Saturday Night Live and becoming a universally beloved series that ended up being the launching point for the careers of some pretty household names. The success of all that actually led to it getting a spiritual spin-off with Amanda Bynes, called The Amanda Show. Disney Channel got into the action was so random, even though it was never supposed to be a sketch comedy show to begin with. If you want to know more about that show, watch my video on it. Cartoon Network, on the other hand, was already trying to compete with Nick and Disney by creating live-action content of their own. They were clearly trying to stick their hand in every single cookie jar to see if any of those shows worked out. And of course, none of them really did. Y'all are trash. A few years later, Cartoon Network decided to give live-action content one last go and created a sketch comedy series of their own. And the result, well, it was something. On January 24th, 2013, Incredible Crew premiered on Cartoon Network, a live-action sketch comedy series consisting of short-form and offbeat comedy acts, hidden camera pranks, original music videos, and commercial parodies using non-sequitur, non-sec-secutor humor. Wikipedia bug, and ain't nobody know what that word means. Out of all the live-action Cartoon Network series, this one somehow ended up being the one that people remember the most. But why is that? Is it remembered for all the wrong reasons, or was it genuinely an underrated gem? That's what we will be discussing today. So sit back, relax, and grab a bowl of your favorite cereal. Because in today's video, we will be discussing the series that some people knew existed, but not many knew much about, Incredible Crew. Coming up on Cartoon Network, next, Incredible Crew. Today's Incredible Crew video is sponsored by the incredible Atlas VPN. Atlas VPN was created with the sole purpose of making the internet accessible and secure for everyone. More and more people nowadays are trying to catch you off guard and use the internet to steal information from you. But Atlas VPN can give you the security that you need and deserve while surfing the web by keeping your private information private without it being traced. Additionally, it protects you from dangerous ads and malware, and you can use it on every single device in your house with one single subscription. But it can also do some really fun stuff too. Like one of my favorite things to do is switch my location to somewhere else in the world and access shows and movies on services like Netflix and HBO Max that are not normally available in my country. So come on down, use the link in the description and pinned comment, and try it out before time runs out. You can get the premium subscription for the ridiculously low price of $183 per month, plus three months extra and with a 30 day back money guarantee. You don't want to miss out on this great offer. So do yourself a favor and check it out. So there's not really a lot of information known about the backstory of how Incredible Crew came to be, but the little pieces of information that I could find all tied back to one man. That man being the one and only Nick Cannon. Ah, oh, okay, where do I begin with Nick Cannon, man? I mean, you guys have seen the news. What is he on, Kid 14 now? Probably more. That's an NBA roster, man. This dude's like a seahorse or something. All right, um, okay, Nick Cannon. Chances are, if you grew up watching TV in the 90s and 2000s, you know who this man is. 
Nick got his start, ironically, on Nick. And even more ironically, on a sketch comedy show, All That. What I did not know, however, is that Nick was actually a writer on All That as well, at the young age of 17. That makes him the youngest staff writer in television history. That is insanely impressive. Nick later on got his own show on Nickelodeon, like many stars of All That. One where he, and I quote, would come across a situation he thought needed changing and then take over to make things better, or at least funnier. After that, well, he became Nick Cannon, the drumline guy, the Mariah Carey guy, the underclassman guy. One thing I find to be very interesting is that in 2007, he tried to make a sketch comedy series way before Incredible Crew called Short Circuits. Yeah, it got canceled after a couple of weeks. But then they brought it back. And then he canceled it again. So Nick Cannon continued to be Nick Cannon for a few more years. Now this is where things actually start to become interesting. In 2009, he formed Incredible Entertainment alongside his partner, Michael Goldman. Together, they produced stuff like Wild and Out, Teen Nick Top 10, and the Halo Awards. Whatever that was. I, I remember seeing the commercial. I just never really actually cared. At some point in time, Nick Cannon started work for Cartoon Network as well. And finally, that is where Incredible Crew comes in. You see, Nick Cannon got his star on a sketch comedy series for kids and even wrote for one. No doubt, sketch comedy was a part of this man's DNA. So his mindset was that now that he has a platform to do so, he was going to try to give kids that same opportunity that he had. I, I guess, I kind of just made that up, but we're going to assume that was the case. So in 2012, he came up with an idea for a sketch comedy show called Incredible Crew, a reference to his production company. Thus, Incredible Crew was born. Now that we got the origin out of the way, it's about time we actually started talking about the show, starting with its presence. Its premise. Why did I write presence on the script? Okay, let me fix that. Incredible Crew is a sketch comedy series that was definitely made to stick out from the rest. It was obviously created with the intention to be very, very weird and awkward and quirky, all that good stuff. It wasn't like All That or The Amanda Show where every sketch actually had some sort of plot or purpose. This show really just felt like a meme, which does kind of make sense because this was made around the time when memes started to become very popular. But for a 22 minute show, that's not really good. One of the ways they make it clear that weirdness and random humor is the main driving force of the show is actually in the intro, which I gotta say is legitimately a banger. It probably took like four seconds to cook up an FL studio, but still, it slaps. Man, like hear this bass in it, it goes crazy. that real music man but let's just look at it for a second and dissect what is going on in this intro i've never seen anything like this and i'm actually a little impressed throughout the entire sequence the main cast is like glitching when it's close up on their faces they start moving their facial muscles like they're stuck in some sort of time loop and when the camera zooms out they're either nodding their heads or doing some sort of other strange gesture they also have super speed i guess Oh yeah, they're also in like a CGI city. Not sure if that's supposed to represent anything for the series, but yeah. And it doesn't help that the Nick Cannon voiceover is whispering, Here they come, y'all. Here they come. Like, why are they coming? Where are they going? Where did they come from? Why are they in a CGI city? Hey, bro, chill. <laughs> well, you're going crazy. You're going, you going crazy. What, what you doing, bro? It is just very weird. A, a very weird environment, but I love it. It's honestly one of my favorite opening sequences of all time, I'm being dead serious. There is just so much going on and so much to unpack. Last thing about the intro, I love towards the end on the sides, you can see the cast bobbing their heads back and forth like earlier. Some of them are just gently doing it. And then there's Jeremy, who's sort of bobbing his head like his red was due. <laughs> nah, but intros are always the best way to set a tone for a series. And I gotta say, this intro is unlike anything else I've ever seen. I still don't understand some of it, but it is very well made. Also, I mean, just look at the promo art. It's just a bunch of random stuff put together with no real theme. 
a mop with sunglasses, tacos, hot dog cereal, a, a wolf, a ubi. See what I mean? Like, that's what the show was built on, more so than any other sketch comedy series I've seen. And I will get to more on that later on in the video when I actually start to talk about the structure of the sketches. Now, a sketch comedy series can only go as far as its cast, or, you know, network executives, allows it to. So, let's take a few minutes to familiarize ourselves with the cast of this show. The cast of Incredible Crew are actually, believe it or not, the strongest aspects of the show. Most of them, I think, are legitimately funny for one reason or another. Starting off, we have Brandon Suhu. Yeah, he, he's all right. That's it, like, I honestly don't have much to say. He's not bad, like, seriously. He's my least favorite of the crew, but it's not because he's horrible or anything. The show in general just doesn't have any memorable sketches, so it's hard for me to really mention anything that stands out about him specifically. Matter of fact, I've seen him in other stuff, and I gotta say, I like those roles way more. He was the voice of Beast Boy for a couple of the animated DC films, one of them being Judas Contract, which is a pretty solid film. He was also in Super Ninjas. Pretty sure he played Ryan Potter's cousin in the show. Which is kind of funny to think about because Ryan Potter also played Beast Boy. How funny is that? Next, we have Tristan Pastere. Pretty sure I pronounced his name right. He's pretty cool. I will give him credit. He's actually really good at playing like super animated characters. Like he acts with a lot of high energy, as does everyone else in the cast, but they definitely give him a lot of the strangest and most extra characters. And for good reason, he's actually kind of funny. Chanel Pelozo is one of my favorite cast members of the series. I don't know, I just think she's cool. She has a great balance of playing characters that are over the top, but also really chill too. I feel like they definitely gave her all of the weird characters, and not like Tristan Pasteric weird characters, but like more so quirky weird characters. Like we all knew a girl like this in middle school, man. Matter of fact, those were like the only kind of girls that would actually talk to me back then. That's probably why I like Chanel so much in this show. I'm trying to say this in the most respectful way possible, but when I first started watching this show and I saw a few of the sketches she was in, I was like, oh yeah, she definitely used to watch Adventure Time. <laughs> and I was right, bruh, she even did some cosplay for it. I don't know, she just gave me Adventure Time fan energy, and that's not a bad thing, I'm just I'm just saying, that's just kinda what what I kinda, I, 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 did, I didn't script this part, so I, I, I'm just completely fumbling right now. Another cool thing about her is that she actually is a pretty decent singer. How come it doesn't hurt when I cut my hair? It's that real music, man, come back home. Oftentimes, she gets paired with Shauna Case, who is again, one of my favorite cast members of the series. Let me tell you something about Shauna. She is genuinely a funny actress. She always gives 200% in her sketches, even sketches that she's hardly in. They tend to always give her roles where she's rapping, and for good reason too. Obviously, I know she didn't write any of these bars, but the way she delivers them sets her apart from any of the other people on the show that have had the rap. My heart connected to your deception. Give me back my presentation. Or you'll nah, be that ain't it, y'all. Listen, that man. Nah, nah. Shamik Moore. Y'all know I had to talk about Mr. Miles Morales himself. Oh, yeah, that was him. Shamik Moore is a funny dude, man. Let me tell you. You can give Shamik literally any bit of dialogue and he'd make it funny. I Home to eat my jacket. Look who I found. Where did you find him? He crawled into the sub sandwich and fell asleep. He has this, uh, the scream of his that you would not expect to come out of his mouth, especially if you only know him from Spider Verse. It's, uh, well, I'll just play it for you. Wow! No, 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 wow! Ah! Uh, this is my jam! You know what sound a T Rex makes? Oh. Shamik also is a very solid singer. He had a little singing career when he was younger, and he still makes music now. But, like a lot of you, I found out about his singing abilities through this one song on the show that he had in particular, 
called So Stylin'. She's like no one in the world. She's got her own style. All right, that's enough. Copyright cops been on my back lately. His career is actually doing very well, Post Incredible Crew. He's appeared in movies like Dope, Cutthroat City, but of course, a lot of us know him now as Miles, aka Spider Man, and Spider Verse. The sequel is coming out this year, and I will be first in line, especially since they got Spider Man Unlimited up in there. Jeremy Shada was more or less the face of Incredible Crew, and I feel like the reason why that was the case was because he was the voice of Finn from Adventure Time. Just like most of the cast, Jeremy did a really good job. He's just a likable actor, and a funny one as well. I would like to assume that the transition from Adventure Time to this show was a relatively smooth one. I don't think he did much in this show that was too different than what they had him doing in Adventure Time, although obviously this time around he was on camera. Incredible Crew was built on random and weird humor, and I mean, Adventure Time? Well... I'm a buff baby that can dance like a man. I can shake him my fanny, I can shake him my can. I'm a tough tootin' baby, I can punch a your butt. They gave a lot of the music videos and songs to him, and he did a lot of announcing work as well on the show. Jeremy and Shauna were often paired together in sketches, mostly as brother and sister. Out of all the combinations that the show tried, I do feel like this one worked the most. So much so that Cartoon Network took note of it and used them, and only them, as part of their Stop Bullying Speak Up program. They had this terrible music video that was written just like an Incredible Crew sketch, talking about how bullying is bad, and if you see it, you should speak up. Yo, listen up, it's Jeremy and Shauna, and we're dropping something heavy, so get ready to pick it up. Huh? It's what you do, it's what you do. No bars. Not a bar. I'm not watching this. You fuck no. They was talking about it's what you do, it's what you do. Like, man, you keep showing this commercial, I'm gonna show y'all what I'm gonna do. Nah, let me stop. Let me stop. But yeah, man, the cast of Incredible Crew were surprisingly solid. I won't lie to you. I like these guys a lot. It's unfortunate that not all of them took off because each and every one of them deserved it. They are honestly the one saving grace of this show. I'm glad I was able to come out of my rewatch with some positives. Because, I mean, those sketches? Those sketches were, uh, well, let's talk about it. I like waffles. Derp. I'm like the most random person ever. Like, I'm well, I'm like the king of randomness, like, and it's epic. Potato! <laughs> You're probably wondering why I showed you that meme. I stumbled across it while I was making this video and thought it would be a great way to open up this section. That meme is literally 100% of the humor in the show. It is painfully 2012. I mentioned it earlier, but this entire series was built on weird, quirky, and random humor. And if you want proof of that, look no further than the sketches themselves. For starters, let's look at the names of some of these episodes, all right? We got Farting Grandpa, Lunchboxing, Candy Deodorant, Remote Control Broccoli, Cheat Sheet Tacos, Face Jeans, <laughs> Rodney Tape Face, Manners start like, what are we doing, man? The sketches in Incredible Crew focus way more on being random and goofy than actually being funny. Most of the time, it didn't even feel like a sketch comedy show. It just felt like a meme compilation. It was to the point where while I was watching this, I literally couldn't envision a child genuinely thinking this is funny. So what we're gonna do is break down the four different types of sketches that Incredible Crew would air, starting with the regular sketches, I guess. I don't really know what to call them. Some of the ideas for these sketches aren't even really all that bad, they're just poorly executed. Like there's one sketch called Lyle Johnson Personal Ref, which, fun fact, stars Jumpsuit Johnson from Zeke and Luther. The idea of having a referee for like, average day stuff like deciding who gets shotgun in a car is actually kind of fun, but not even halfway through an already short sketch, the referee gets into an argument with the other kid's personal empire, and then it just ends. I know for a fact that if that sketch was on all that, it would have been handled a lot better. Even season nine of all that, when they got rid of all the cool people and had dudes like Kyle Sullivan on there, Who? it still would have been better. They tend to also do this thing where they'll start a sketch off relatively normal, but then the ending is completely unrelated to what the sketch had going for it earlier. Like there's one sketch where there are these contestants on a game show, and when the host is announcing the prizes that they could potentially win, the contestants' faces get bigger and bigger and wider and wider. Now, how would you end the sketch like this? Would you A, make a joke where the host was actually lying the whole time just to see their reactions, B, 
have their faces get so big to the point where their heads explode, or C, turn it into an origin story about how statues are made. Like, what? What, what made you go with, with that, that verse? verse? Like, why do that? You had a good thing going for it. I would have much rather seen their heads explode in like confetti or something. And then the host is like, ugh, not again, and then runs away. Not only does that still fit the brand of comedy on this show, but it also would have genuinely gotten a laugh out of me. Maybe not a laugh. Maybe one of those things where like air comes out of my nostrils. There's another sketch where they said, what if we took the plot of Top Gun but used muffins instead? Yup. Not all of these sketches were bad though. There's one sketch where Jeremy finds a remote control that controls his little sister and uses her to beat up a bunch of bullies. So that was cool, I guess. I also like Solar System Wolf. I don't really know why. I just kind of think it's funny. Yeah! There's another Jeremy led sketch called Doug High, where a bunch of clones of the same kid get sent to one school. The idea of it is actually really dope. And I thought we were about to get some heat. Turns out the entire sketch is just jokes about how they all have the same name. Okay, time for roll call. Doug? Here, 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 here. here. Hey, Doug. Yeah? Uh, not you, Doug. The other Doug. Hey, Doug. Yeah. Not you, Doug. The other Doug. Hey, Doug. Yeah. No, not you, Doug. The other- My favorite of these kind of sketches is probably the one where the cast are playing a parody of the Wiggles. In it, they're singing a song, but as they're spelling out the word smile, they transform into each and every letter. I don't know, the idea of it is actually kind of funny, and usually the show doesn't execute well on good ideas like this, but the pure randomness of it all and the horror on the cast faces as it's happening actually made me laugh. But yeah, when it comes to just like average sketches without any strict theme or gimmick, Incredible Crew was definitely flopping. And unfortunately, it didn't get much better in this next type of sketch I'll be talking about. In between main sketches, the cast would partake in these little 10 to 15 second skits where they, uh, they kind of just do whatever. A really common trope that the show does is that they'll take two random words and mash them together, thinking the outcome will actually be funny, but instead it's just really stupid. They use a lot of these in the promos too, so you might remember some of them. We got human ice cube dispenser. Oh, I wonder, I wonder what it's gonna happen. Oh. Wow. Shoe hands. What are we doing? Beard exchange high five. Milk harmonica. Oh, well, surely it doesn't actually mean what I think. It's gonna, oh, wait, maybe. Yup, okay. All right, well. Oh, and don't forget, screaming at soup. But yeah, most of these just felt useless in my opinion. I don't see anyone laughing at this. Even children I have a hard time imagining getting enjoyment out of this. It's just stupid. And look, I think random humor is fine in most cases, but this really lacks charm. One of the more charming aspects of the show, however, comes from the hidden camera pranks. In most of the episodes, the cast will go out to locations in California and film videos of them in public where they prank people. One prank that was surprisingly wholesome was this one where some of the kids went outside dressed as cheerleaders and they held this banner in front of people and if they crossed it, they would dance around them saying that they won. This one guy's reaction was exceptionally wholesome. You're a winner. You feel great? I feel good. You're a winner, man. How do you feel? I don't know, sir, but you won. Wait, why did they blur out the Superman logo like they weren't airing Young Justice, a DC cartoon with two Superman characters in it on the channel during this time? Another aspect of the show that they kinda succeeded in is one that is a staple in sketch comedy series. That aspect being original music videos. When it comes to music videos in this show, it really can't be hit or miss. There are some really boring ones that fall into some of the similar tropes of the more lame sketches like heavy metal science fair, super duper gross things, so what? So what? And the new kid rap. Wait, is that is that the new boys? The absolute worst one was putting shaving cream on stuff. Where I kid you not, the only thing they do is put shaving cream on stuff and sing about it for three minutes. They weren't all bad though. There were actually a couple well-written ones here. Earlier I mentioned So Stylin', a really solid song. Teacher's Lounge featuring rapper E40 was another creative one. 
Bad haircuts wasn't one of my favorites, but it's not bad either. Questions Before Bed, however, is definitely one of the best sketches and music videos of the show. It's creative, has fun lyrics, and genuinely sounds really good. Like, I wouldn't mind listening to this at all. But of course, the one you have all been waiting for me to talk about is none other than... I'm running errands with my mom. I can't even hate on this one, man. It's just it's just too iconic. These lyrics are surprisingly well written compared to everything else in this show. Now wait, hold on. This is the best part. You ready? Cook, mom. Cook, mom. What you cooking? Cook. And she was cooking for real though. Like I mean, golly, she was hitting that. And she lost me. Overall, the sketches in this show were like 30% good and 70% mid. I feel like if the writers actually applied themselves more, we would have gotten a better product. Instead, they settled for low effort, random humor that truly would not have been sustainable past 13 episodes. The hilarious thing about this show is that when you think about it, it should have really just swapped places with So Random. So Random's humor wasn't even all that random. Like when you look back at it, it really was just a normal kid sketch comedy show. Incredible Cruel, on the other hand, literally should have just been called So Random because that's what the show was. Not only that, but if you give the Incredible Crew cast the sketches from So Random, it would have definitely made the show better. Not by a lot, but it definitely would have been an improvement. These shows literally fix each other's problems, it's crazy. But yeah, this show was, uh, it was definitely a pain to get through. But I will tell you one thing though, I would have loved to have been on this show when I was a teenager, because boy, could you tell that the cast genuinely loved being on set and doing this stuff. There are even moments in the show where some of the cast are seen laughing at each other and they kept it in the final cut. Like this scene, for instance. Incredible Crew may not have been a great show to experience from an outsider's perspective, but I have no doubt that the crew had fun making it. And as someone that one day would love to make a kids sitcom or sketch comedy series, I think that really is important. And I was glad to see that they were enjoying themselves in a fun and presumably safe environment. Oh yeah, there were also a couple of animated sketches as well, but I, I skipped all of them because they just seemed kind of lame, honestly. Coming up next, more Incredible Crew on Cartoon Network. So, I consider this video and my So Random video to be like brother and sister. And it was at this point in my So Random video where I took a break from analyzing the series and instead talked about the performers and the guests. But the thing is, this show didn't really have either of those. So instead, I decided this would be where I dump all of the notes that I took that I haven't been able to really properly fit into the video so far. So consider this an intermission. An intermission of fun facts. Fun fact number one, the show had a lot of guest stars you would probably recognize from other shows. I mentioned Jumpsuit Johnson from Zeke and Luther earlier, but the dude who played Deputy Dingle in Zeke and Luther was also in the show. The person you would probably recognize the quickest, though, is Mindy Sterling, who is known for playing Miss Briggs in iCarly. She also played a principal in Ant Farm as well, so I guess people just think she has a school faculty vibe there. Fun fact number two. Speaking of guest stars, apparently Kelly Marie Tran from Star Wars was in an episode of Incredible Crew, so that's cool. Fun fact number three. Most of the music was recorded at Nick Cannon's home studio. Fun fact number four. The cast met Snoop Dogg. Fun fact number five, this one's actually kind of funny. So, in 2013, Nickelodeon created a programming block called Nick Studio 10, where in between TV shows, they would do like little sketches and skits and stuff. I actually have no memory of this, pretty sure I had retired from Nickelodeon at that point, but yeah, one day, the Nick Studio 10 Facebook account randomly decided to make a post stating that they were better than Incredible Group. Just straight up called them out for some reason. Like, bruh. These women have in the middle off. <laughs> the next and final fun facts are very interesting, in my opinion. So, there are basically two other members of Incredible Crew. One of them is some random dude that only appears in sketches where Shimik's hair is short, so I guess those were the earlier ones. His name is Justin Tanucci. He barely has any speaking lines, but like, it was clear to me that he isn't just another extra because he genuinely would be in sketches with the other cast members in roles that could have just been played by someone else from the cast. Mysterious seventh member, I hope you were having a good day. The eighth cast member, dead serious, is Mikey Day from SNL. 
He's in quite a few sketches, and apparently he's even a producer on the show. So, that's cool, I guess. And, uh, yeah. Those were some fun facts that I randomly felt like dropping. I hope you enjoy them. I wish I could tell you that Incredible Crew's abrupt ending had a cool and lore-filled reasoning like so random. But the truth is, it was canceled because nobody cared. <laughs> That's it, see y'all in the next one. Nah, but for real though, this was the last live action Cartoon Network show for a reason. They finally realized that it wasn't a good fit and never will be. Not going you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it ain't gonna, mm, nah, nah, it ain't gonna work. I was honestly surprised to see how many people in the comments say these positive things about the show because even when the show came out, I knew it was bad. And that's not to say that you guys can't be entitled to your opinion. If you like the show, that's perfectly fine. But I feel like you do have to sometimes take off the nostalgia glasses and look at the show for what it is. And if you still think it's a quality series, then hey, I'm glad you like it. But uh, nah, yeah, the show was trash. <laughs> it had very few redeeming qualities, and I honestly think the writers wasted a genuinely talented cast of actors. If they had just applied themselves a little more, we could have gotten a more overall solid project. A project that still would have only lasted 13 episodes, mind you, but at least would have been a little more bearable to watch. I feel like some people like to throw around the phrase, worst Cartoon Network show around, but I feel like this might be one of the only shows that genuinely deserve this crown. And I'm sorry if this hurts anyone that grew up with the show, but yeah, it's trash. <laughs> I will give this show credit though. The show is remembered pretty well for one that was only on the air for three months. I guess that's one positive you can take from this. I don't know how they did it. I wish Incredible Crew could have been a success and, you know, good because I love sketch comedy shows, but this show was definitely a flop. It didn't have to be this way, but it is. I don't want this to like discourage you from watching it over again though, because I mean, by all means, please buy the show online and give the cast some royalties. I don't care. At the end of the day, those were just my thoughts on the show. If you have any thoughts on the show, please do let me know in the comments below. That's a bar. I am very curious to see why some of you actually liked it. If you're new, please hit that subscribe button. And if you like the video, then, well, like the video. I got some really fun videos coming up that I can't wait to post. But until then, I'm Mr. Nostalgia, and I'm out for now. Peace.